It's time on Pedal Box. We're working on the Thunderbird again, and today we're finally replacing Aid's old and seized factory carburetor with a Holly 650 single pumper four barrel carb. We're going to get this on and hopefully get this thing ready to fire. So with that, it's time to install the carb onto the top of the engine. Now I'm going to have to take this plate off again. We've got the original little phenolic um, spacer on here. I'm going to take this off and give it another clean down. We taped over so we didn't get any stuff inside it whilst it was laid up. And I also want to clean out the inside of the manifold ports just a little bit more. I can see where there's a little bit of, um, well it's not really rust, I guess it's uh, some sort of deposit, possibly from the tape or something. Either way, it needs cleaning. And then we can put this on. Now with this temporarily installed here, you can see there's a few things that we're going to need to move around. Most of which is the fuel port, which on the old carb came in on this side. This one comes into the driver's side, as in left side of the car over here. So we're going to have to replumb that. There's also a vacuum line to go to the distributor advance over here. So we're going to have to find out where that plugs into on this model and then go and rerun that. Plumbing the vacuum lines to elsewhere. There is another one on this side as well. I wonder if that might be the same one. We shall see. And then make sure that it clears, install the return springs, and then move on to the front of the engine. The carb's loosely installed now, it's bolted down pretty good, we've got the accelerator linkage, yeah, not really installed, but installed enough. So we're going to start moving on to accessories and getting kind of the rest of the front end of the whole thing rebuilt. First up, we've got the power steering pump, which i got to say, uh, looks really, really nice. I think now that we've cleaned all the mank off it and we've lacquered it, so it should stay looking nice and shiny metal. So we're going to get that in, hook it back up to its hoses and then clean all the fluid it's seeped onto my hand off. We really should have watched the video where we took all of the accessories off the front of the engine because putting them all back on was a debacle. We thought ahead for a change and decided we'd attach all of the brackets that hold the power steering pump in place onto the block before we put it into the car. That way we can work out where they all go, what the alignment needs to be and it should be nice and simple. And in fairness we weren't wrong. Attaching the pump onto the engine was really easy. Attaching the pipes onto the pump was next to impossible. So we had to take it back off the brackets, put the brackets on the engine, attach the pipes onto the pump, and attach the pump onto the brackets, which wasn't actually that difficult in the first place anyway. But that's nothing compared to the alternator installation. It's got one long bolt and a spacer that bolt it onto the block, and then two brackets, one to brace it and one to tension it. We know it bolts onto the water pump, but we can't work out exactly where. There are two bolt holes on the water pump and the bracket that really look like they should line up, but for some reason they don't. So we need to work out exactly where these two brackets go. So we consult the big book of knowledge. The only picture of the alternator installed on the engine shows it underslung below the center line of the water pump. But now the tensioning bracket doesn't seem to fit anywhere useful. We put the pulley back on as well to try and confirm the positioning and it's clearly wrong. The alternator is only meant to be underslung when you have an air conditioning pump fitted in its normal position higher up in the bay. So we take it back off again, move it back to the original position, and with a bit of help from Google eventually find out where the bracket should go. Nice and easy. Everything can go back together, full success. Or not. The Franken stud that we made with an M8 nut as a washer now sticks too far forward and it clashes on the pulley. Maximum fail. So we took out the lazy spacer, shortened the stud, and even removed a little bit more of the head that's actually a seized nut on the stud, which is why we discarded it previously. This gave us all the clearance we needed for the pulley, we could reassemble everything and add the fan on again. The sun shone, angels sang, it was a good day. From here, it's plain sailing to install the thermostat housing and expansion tank, and everything is done. I've ever heard. That was quite literally the last bolt of the day 
that snapped. We had nothing else planned, we were going to pack the tools up and start again the following day. And instead, we spent 40 minutes with a bolt extractor trying to remove it. But at least it worked. Well, last night was definitely demoralizing. It took us the better part of four hours to install two accessories and partially install the water tank, which we didn't manage to because as you saw, the second bolt we put in, literally the last bolt of the night, snapped. And that's just typical. So that was about another hour of drilling it out and then using a little tap extractor. But it came out, it came out clean, so we don't have to take anything else off. Or, or basically undo a bunch of work to get into it to do anything. So that is at least good news. But because those are just some little quarter inch bolts and the other one looks a little bit ropey as well, I'm not gonna put this today, which means we're not gonna be able to start the engine, but we can put a load more stuff on. So I'm gonna get some new bolts for this. And in the meantime, we've still got the radiator to fit. So that all needs to go into the front and there is a couple of little modifications we need to make to the battery tray area before we do that and fix the wiring. Now, last time we worked on this, we were asking whether or not we should repaint the tanks on the end or leave them brass and just lacquer them, the same as we did on the expansion tank. And as you probably guessed from the expansion tank, we've just gone with brass and lacquer. So this needs to be fit back in. There's a couple of bolts at the bottom and then a cowl at the top. We can start putting all of the other pieces in. Now, this goes down on the very front of the car, and this is going to require Chris's help to lower this in. So I'm just going to pass this over to him that way and we can drop this roughly in place, like that. Not for the first time on Pedalbox, we've installed a piece so that we can remove it in five minutes after we've checked how something else that connects to it fits in. So this sheet here goes next to the battery tray, I think just protects it from the elements and from some of the mess of the engine bay. But the massive new plastic battery tray that we've installed is too wide to clear it. So we want to test fit this, figure out how much of the tray we've got to cut off, cut it off, then reinstall everything and see where we're at. The next four things we're installing here are the bonnet hinges, which I'm not going to demonstrate the action on because I am terrified of that spring, which is currently full of energy. But these just drop in here and bolt in. There's a couple of fairly big bolts that run from here into the strut towers. Then once they're on, we're going to get the strut tower braces that run from the tops of the uh, coil spring and shock absorber units into the main cross member there. And with that, the engine bay will be more or less complete and we can start putting the bonnet on. definitely snatched victory from the jaws of defeat last night when trying to fit this uh, expansion tank on. I think we've been very, very lucky to manage to get that bolt to wind out properly using an actual thread extractor. I'm slightly amazed. Yeah, and me not owing you an intake manifold is a really nice outcome as well, so I'll yes. call it a win. Or at least not a whole, well, all of the time for a whole set of gaskets yeah. and stripping the top end down, which, no. No, 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 don't want to do any of that. Not, not right now. I'd rather yeah. see if it runs and then if I have to, I will. As it is, it's turned out a pretty good couple of days. We've got almost everything back together. We've got the structure tied together. The yep. only thing we haven't got on is the hood because we're missing a couple of bolt clips that we need to put into our yep. brackets, which are now very, very unsafely tied <laughs> yes. down in tension on the springs, which I'm quite terrified of. It's like yeah, these, the, these are a little bit um, lethal at the moment, but it's all good. We tr in zip ties, we trust. But the rest of the front of the car is back together, except for the expansion tank, radiators in, or the panel work around the radiators in. As I say, we, no, as Chris says, we just need a couple of little clips that we can thread into in the bottom of the bonnet. So I'm going to pick those up at some point in the near future, and then we bonnet on and see if it works. These are also really badly seized as well. They've just been sat for nearly two years now with just paint on them. Yeah, he had well, like a four, lead, four foot long lever up to try and actuate them and free them yeah, up. It was, uh, big old something. cheetah bark. But it definitely worked in yeah. the end, you know, they're down, it's all good. So next time, you will hopefully see us getting, well, next time on the Thunderbird anyway, we'll get the expansion tank on, we'll get the rest of it back together, hopefully do brake fluid, because we've got to do that yet. Yep. Um, we've got to pull the... Um, While you think about that, we've got to replace a starter solenoid that I broke so kindly for you. Yeah, we've got to do starter solenoid, and I've got to get the covers off here to drop some oil down into the rockers so that we can... Um, Make so sure that they're not just going to like 
bend and they're horribly seized. We want to make sure things are actually moving and loose. And then we'll be good to go. So you can support us in this endeavor at shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy beanies like this, t-shirts like the one I'm wearing under this rather tattered jumper. And uh, we've got stickers, long sleeve t-shirts, caps, hats, all sorts of stuff. Yep, you can also jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show if you want to support us directly there. We've got tiers from a dollar a month upwards. The five dollar tier and everything above it gets access to our Discord server, which right now is mostly a stream of pictures of my <laughs> misery taking the SD1 apart for a head unit swap that has now turned into a complete sound deadening treatment and recarpeting. Yeah. So that's escalated a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. So you'll see that coming up as well. We've got some video of some of that being stripped apart, which is really good. So we'll have some more SD1 content on the channel. And if you want to see that, you should definitely subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification in the corner so you know when all the videos come out. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone.